Praise the Lord. I believe you are here this morning not just to hear about Elijah, not to enjoy the message concerning Elijah, but that God in his power will take hold of you. Amen. Don't say I'm a woman. I cannot be Elijah. I just came here to hear what you have to say. You'll be a woman in Israel. And the Lord will take you from where you are. He will take you to the mountain top. And the things to say you'll never be able to do. Power is available this morning. Authority anointing unction from heaven. That what you thought will not be done by you in particular. You are the one. We're here because of you this morning. And the stage is set for the man, for the woman who will say, count on me. I want to be an Elijah for my generation, for my locality, for my denomination, for my ministry, and for this nation, and for this continent, and beyond our continent, the Lord anoints you for that purpose. And I'm talking to all the ministers and professionals all over the world, those who are connected with us this morning. Whenever we came, whenever we come to learn, it is not what we hear that moves us forward. It is what we do with what we hear. It is how we act on what we hear. It is what we give expression and action to in what we hear that moves us forward. And so this morning, I pray for you. You will not be a hearer of the word only. You will be an actor. You'll be a doer. You'll be a champion in this generation in Jesus' name. Father, we come before you. We come like on the day of creation that you will recreate every one of us in Jesus' name. And the breath of life, resurrection life, revived life, revitalize life we pray that that breath of life will come to everyone into everyone here and everywhere today in jesus name thank you lord because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray god bless you you can be seated we're looking at elijah his life, his times, his calling, his ministry, and the place he stood in his land, so that you will know the calling the Lord has given you. There are people, ministers, pastors, professionals, and you say, I want success. Success is good. The Lord wants to move you from success to significance. Yeah. Uh, those who are successful in ministry by themselves in their locality, but they don't come to a life, a ministry of significance. And so our prayer our desire, our aspiration, our ambition, the drive within us is to go from success and to go to significance. And the Lord is ready. And if you are ready, the Lord will do it in you, for you, on our behalf. Today I come to speak on the message 
presenting valiant men to a vacillating society. Presenting a valiant servant for a vacillating society. Presenting a valiant prophet for a vacillating populace. Look at First Kings chapter 18 verse 21. In First Kings chapter 18 verse 21, and Elijah came unto all the people. Elijah came unto all the people. You will not do the ministry until you come out. Whatever locks you in, whatever holds you down, whatever keeps you away from the people, whatever it is, maybe you are spending days of fasting and days of personal retreat for personal renewal. All the fasting, all the renewal, everything you do there will amount to nothing until you come out to the people. There are those who are afraid of society. There are those who are panicking because of this is happening, this is happening, and they lock themselves up for you to do anything in life, for you to do anything in ministry. The time comes for you that you know this is my day, this is my time, and I come out. All the treasure you gather, all the power you have, all the vision you have, while you are inside there meeting with the Lord will only be useful when you come out. Your time has come to come out. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long ought ye between two opinions if the lord be god follow him how long will you be vacillating you are here you are there you cannot make up your mind you're a man you're a woman of indecision you cannot tell this is the way to go or that is the way to go the wind or circumstances blow you and you are not a man of one mind a man of one goal a man of one ministry a man of one direction a man of one destiny a man of one doctrine the doctrine of the bible if the wind is moving this way a popular opinion is moving that way you are here and there how long hold she between two opinions if the lord be god follow him and if bear then follow him and the people answered him not a word they were silenced by their guilt they were muffled by their condemnation they had been too long halting vacillating and they couldn't make up their mind they had the word and they had people that had come before and introduced them to the way of the Lord but they were vacillating now in our society today the preachers of today the prophets of today the ministers of today the proclaimers so come to declare the mind of God unto us how is it we have double mind and we are between two opinions we are neither here nor there there is something a wind blowing and it's blowing across the Christian church that you cannot find Elijah's today that will challenge the population, challenge the church, challenge the ministry, and say, Enough is enough. And I come to tell you this morning, Enough is enough. Amen. Enough of doubting enough of unbelief enough of vacillating enough of moving here and there today we're rising up yeah. we're going to take this land this nation this continent the world like a storm 
we're going to be champions in our day. <laughs> I don't know about you, I'm going to be a champion. Because we're no more vacillating between two opinions. We know that God is God. And we're going to serve this God of heaven. I'm going to divide the message to three parts. Number one, the prophecy of rain for a humbled nation. The prophecy of rain. Rain had not fallen for the past three and a half years. And now Elijah came because the Lord had given him the word of prophecy, the prophecy of rain for a humbled nation. Number two, the process of return by a halting nation. They were halting. And then there was a process put on by the Lord, orchestrated and done, acted out by Elijah. The process of return by a halting nation. Number three, the power for remaking a holy nation. The Lord will remake us. Amen. He will remake you. And as he remakes you, he will use you as an instrument to remake multitudes in our land, in every nation, in our continent, everywhere in the world. The prophecy, the process, the power. Reign, return, and remake for a humbled nation. A halting nation becoming a holy nation. Number one. Look at number one here. Is the prophecy of rain for a humbled nation. In First Kings chapter 18. Reading from verse 1. First Kings 18 verse 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, Go, show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. Go, show thyself. I've hidden you at the brook Cherith. I've hidden you in that widow's house. Now is the time to move out of personal preparation, hidden and then go into public proclamation that to show yourself unto Ahab and I will give send rain upon the earth. Now for them it was the rain of refreshing for cultivation of the land. The land needed to be cultivated there had been no rain. There was drought. There was nothing coming from the farm. And now God gave them the prophecy that rain was coming. The rain of refreshing. The refreshing in the land for the cultivation of the land. But there's something the Lord is also talking about looking ahead. There's number two. The rain, not of refreshing now for the land of righteousness for the coming of the Lord. The Lord said he'll send Elijah before the great day, the coming of the Lord, and he will turn the hearts of the children unto their fathers and the hearts of the fathers unto their children. It was going to send the reign of righteousness before the coming of of the Lord. Number three is the reign of revival. Revival in every soul. Revival in every heart. Revival in every minister. So that as we are revived and we are resurrected spiritually, we take the word of the gospel or the power of God to our land for the conversion of the lost. The reign of revival for the conversion of the lost. Look at number one there. Number one is the reign of refreshing for the cultivation 
of the land. In James chapter 5, reading from verse 17, it says, Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Look at verse 18. And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth. That's the purpose. He prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth a fruit. That's the rain of refreshing for the cultivation of the land. Look at number two here. Number two is the rain of righteousness for the coming of the Lord. Hosea chapter 10, reading from verse 12. So to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come and reign righteousness upon you. As we look at the church, I mean the church at large, I mean the church in our nation. We, if we see righteousness at all, there's a drop of righteousness there. There's a trickle of righteousness there. There's a little righteousness there among the men, among the women, among the boys, among the girls. We pray, let souls be converted. Let there be righteousness. But if any preacher is bold enough to mention the definite peculiar sins in the land that the land is to repent of, everybody, you know, it's like, how could you mention that? Well, if we want them to be converted, if we want them to hear the truth that sets men and women free, if we want them to know what they are repenting of, why shouldn't we mention that? You know, in public, they don't mention this. It was mentioned in Galatians chapter 5. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 verse 10 it was mentioned in Romans chapter 1 from verse 29 to verse 32 it was mentioned in Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 why shouldn't we mention the sins of the people that the people will know what they are repenting of you know we preach uh, messages that you know they are so smooth they are so nice and everybody is jumping and shouting and happy they are happy in their sins and there's no righteousness in the land we come to church there are so many churches in our country so many churches in our continent we go back to the offices and the offices become more corrupt than when those christians got there where is the righteousness the prophecy of the lord is that i and you we should go to the people and show ourselves to the people and in promises he'll bring rain on our land rain on our land I, I, that's the rain of righteousness so to yourselves in righteousness and reap in mercy break up your fallow ground for it is time is it not time i said is it not time after playing religion for so many years in our country, after planting church here, church there, church in every corner of the street, in every city, and there is no righteousness, and there is no integrity, and there's nobody to stand up and say, this is wrong. We can't even tell the congregation in our churches, this is wrong. How can we tell students in our schools, some of us are Christian people, we have schools, we are proprietors, proprietresses. We cannot even tell our young people, this is wrong. We cannot go to our office and say, this is wrong. Religion has been too long enough, it's enough. 
it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Amen. Say the amen that will move you to action. Uh, look at this in Zechariah chapter 10 uh, verse 1. It says, ask ye of the Lord, rain in the time of the latter. We need to ask the Lord in the time of the latter rain. Uh, the Lord is about to come uh, and is coming for the righteous. It's not coming for denomination. It's not coming to those who say we're church. It's not coming for people who say we're religious. It's coming for those who are saved, those who are born again, those who have repented, and those whose uh, sacrifice of Christ at Calvary has done something and they are turned around and the grace of God has come to their lives and they have the righteousness of faith given from heaven ask ye of the lord rain in the time of the latter rain so he the lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass to every one grass to every one grass in the field for you for me all the churches, Amen. all the ministries. Amen. And look at this in Osea again, Osea chapter 6, verse 3. In Osea chapter 6, verse 3, then shall we know. If we follow on to know the Lord is going forth, is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us. As the rain, he himself, the Lord Almighty, the holy, holy, holy God of heaven, it will come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. We're coming to number three here. Number three, the rain of revival for the conversion of the lost. Joel chapter 2, reading from verse 23. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain the former rain and the latter rain in the first month what happens when that comes upon us look at verse 28 in verse 28 and it shall come to pass afterward that i will pour out my spirit like he pours out the rain like he sends the rain upon the earth, he says, I will pour forth, pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. That means there'll be no discrimination. There'll be no demarcation. There'll be no difference between that ministry here, that ministry here. If it's the same God, the same God of power, the same God of purity, the same God that wants righteousness and holiness, if it's the same God that wants our hearts to be pure, walking in that church, walking in that other church, he'll do the same thing. He'll not leave that church the way they are or the way they were and then come to this other church. The revival that the Lord is talking about is the revival that brings the spirit, the spirit of purity, the spirit of peace, the spirit of power upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall tell me prophesy they'll have the boldness when that train of revival comes your sons and your prophets shall prophesy your old men help me repeat those words help me repeat those words 
your old men repeat those words tell me your old men the world has scientists who are old men old women and they tap from their experience their resources and their research old men they don't bury their old men in science the medical profession has their old men and their old women they've gone through 30 40 years of dealing with epidemics and with things that the world could not cope with they don't throw away the world do not throw away their old men and old women who are medical doctors who are researchers the old the people of the world they have their old men and women in business and those people they know all the techniques and everything they've gone through recession and they know how the people can still boom at the time of recession the world does not pack off their old men but the church they're the people that say almost you are is it 50 or 60 you know i don't know what maybe in that place is 60 the other place 65 the other place 70 and when you are like that then you fold up your old man now but look at the mind of god it says your old man shall dream dreams i didn't hear your amen <laughs> Your young men shall see visions. And then in verse 29, it says, And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days, I will pour out of my spirit. Look at verse 32, what will happen then? And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered shall be healed shall be saved and shall be set free it is time we understand that the rain is not just the rain on the grass on the ground there number one is the rain of refreshing number two is the rain of righteousness number three is the rain of revival for the conversion of the lost and i pray in all our churches there will be conversions in our ministries, there will be conversions. In our profession, the people will contact, the people will touch. There will be conversion in Jesus' name. That's the prophecy of the rain. Refreshing, righteousness, revival. Let's come to point number two here. Number two, the process of return by a halting nation the process of return one message may not do it one crusade may not do it one proclamation may not do it one confrontation may not do it a process the process of return by a halting nation we're coming to first kings chapter 18 verse 21 and elijah came unto all the people and said how long halt ye between two opinions if the lord be god follow him but if Baal, then follow him and the people answered not a word. Then he gave a challenge. He said, you have the prophets of Baal. I am the only one here standing for the God of heaven. Take your bull, take your animal, kill, but don't put any fire. And then pray to your God, Baal, because he's supposed to be the God of fire so pray to him according to his title and then i will pray to my god the god of heaven whichever god 
brings down fire that is the God we are going to recognize oh, verse 24 in verse 24 and call ye on the name of your gods many gods and I will call on the name of the Lord and the God that answereth by fire let him be God and all the people answered and said tell me they said that's right that's right how do we serve a God that cannot prove himself have we just been blindly following Baal all these years and he cannot prove himself the God that answers by fire let him be the God there are three things we're looking at here number one is the fruitless search of vain seekers number two is the furry salmon before vacillating sufferers number three the fanatical supplication with violent spirits look at number one number one the fruitless search of vain seekers we're looking at first kings chapter 18 verse 5 and Ahab said unto Abadiah go into the land unto all the fountains of water and unto all the brooks per adventure we may find grass to save the horses and the mules alive that we lose not all the beasts look at this Ahab lost focus Ahab he wasn't appointed king over the beasts he wasn't appointed kings over the horses he wasn't king over the moors the people were suffering the people were hungry the people were dying famine was on the land they could barely feed themselves he didn't search for a program that will feed the nation but he told Obadiah the king began to seek as a vain seeker he began to seek for fountains of water and brooks so that peradventure we may keep the animals alive Ahab can I ask you a question if all the people die of hunger and the cattle and the animals are alive what's the use of the animals when the people are dead and we need to ask ourselves as leaders have we lost focus that we're seeking for this and seeking for that and the people were to lead they're dying they're suffering and they are being lost the fruitless search not only that you read it yourself later when Elijah met Obadiah and Elijah said Obadiah he said are you that my Lord there is no place where King Ahab has not sought for you and if anybody said they didn't see you he took an oath of them now you tell me to go and tell Ahab that Elijah is here and when I've gone there he, the Spirit of God will catch you away vain seekers Ahab never got what he sought and the people who leave the source the fountain and they leave the Lord and they're seeking after this after this and after that they are vain seekers they never get what they're seeking for but when you come and you seek the Lord with all your heart all your soul according to his provision and according to all his declaration and you seek him in the way of the Lord you will find the Lord and everything God makes available you will find in Jesus name Let's leave all the things we're seeking after 
the church the ministers the people they're seeking after this and that and then will become vain seekers let me ask you what are you seeking for there are pastors and ministers they're seeking for number they're seeking for many people to come to their assembly that's not what you seek and because they're seeking that uh, you know the story some of them go to Habalist some of them go to the Jew people some of them go to idol worshippers and they want uh, you, and they pay millions so that that man there in the hut in the shed will do something for them they'll have number you lose your soul you're lost for all eternity when you go to seek for numbers numbers someone seeking for money i want to have money and they leave god aside and they're vain seekers and they may do juju to have the money or they may have a kind of message that says anybody that the lord has sent me to you that if you donate this car if you donate this if you go and sell your property and you bring the money to me then they tell them a lie you will have this and how many people have sold land they have sold their cars they've sold everything and they bring the money to profit so and so and they become poorer and the prophet becomes richer seeking what are you seeking after why are you here this morning what are you looking for give me the method and give me the key so that people will come people will be converted people's lives will be changed and their lives will turn from sin to salvation from unrighteousness to righteousness that the right seeker examine your heart examine your mind what seekest thou what are you seeking ahab obadiah he sought it was fruitless searching because they were vain seekers. Look at number two there. Number two there, the fairy salmon before vacillating sufferers. Here comes Elijah. I pray God will grant you and I the spirit in Elijah. Yeah. You know, if you are going to be an Elijah, know how you pray. Because whatever is happening and whatever you declare persecution may come and if you are saying oh lord help me to so minister i want the result i don't want persecution that's bad prayer lord whatever persecution comes give me the strength to bear the persecution that is the good prayer when the lord is heavier give me a stronger shoulder to bear the heavier load don't say loads never activities that will bring persecution don't pray like that but when the lord gets heavier give me the grace and the strength and a stronger shoulder to bear that load if you're going to be an elijah there is uh, you know a jezebel that is watching and you see uh, you touch my prophets you get reach of my prophets ahab came home to tell me this is what you did to my prophets that have been feeding and sustaining all these three and a half years the gods do so to me and much more if i make not your life as one of those prophets and now don't blame elijah Elijah didn't have a wife. He was a lone ranger. Nobody to say unto him, Are you afraid? That's just a man. 
And as God or a woman, as God has dealt with those people, he will deal with her. Thank God for courageous wives. Amen. Amen. You remember Martin Luther? Martin Luther was the forerunner at the forefront of the Reformation. And the pressure became so hard and things were heavy on him that at home Martin Luther was discouraged and he was about to give up. And the wife noticed that. And the wife, the wife didn't school him, talk to him, criticize him, and do anything. And the wife just went to wear a black dress. Black up, black dress, black shoe, everything black. And entered into the room where Martin Luther was discouraged and distressed and depressed and almost giving up. And then when the husband, Matuna, saw her all in black, then Matuna said, Danny, who died? And the wife said, God, he rose up. He said, don't say that again. Uh -uh. If God is not dead, what are you doing here? That brought revival. That brought revival. And then he got up and he said, My God is not dead. If there are as many devils or demons as there are tiles on the ground there, I will stand for God. And he stood for God. That's why you are here today. Because Martin Luther had an intelligent visionary wife but you know elijah didn't have a wife elijah didn't have a church did not have counselors did not have any council of elders he was just alone like that he didn't have any trainer he didn't have any coach that will tell him and there were no hospitals in the land of those psychiatrists that would deal with depression the man was down you have no excuse today to be depressed you have pastors you have ministers you have counselors you have the whole bible you have the promises of god that you can read so don't say elijah at his depressing moment when he was persecuted i am like elijah i am going through my a depressing time i will not I said I will not. My God is alive. The promises are alive. And nothing will shake you from what you ought to do in Jesus' name. The very sermon before vacillating sufferers. Look at First Kings chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 20. So he had said to all the children of Israel, and he gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, how long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. Look at verse 22. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, I, even I only, that's why he was depressed. He didn't know the name. He didn't know the contact number of any other man or woman of God in the land. I, even I only. That's why God calls us to fellowship. There were 7,000 men in Israel. 
as God said, who had not bowed the knee unto Baal, Elijah knew none of them. He was all by himself. Now two are better than one. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. But he said, I, even I only remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Verse 23, let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose the one bullock of the, for themselves and cut each in pieces and lay each on wood and put no fire under and I will dress the other bullock and lay each on wood and put no fire under and then in verse 24 and call ye on the name of your gods and I will call on the name of the Lord and the God that answered by fire, let him be God. Any amen? amen? And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Look at number three here. Number three, we're looking at the fanatical supplication with violent spirits. We're looking at First Kings chapter 18, verse 25. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it first. For ye are many and call on the name of your gods and put no fire under. Look at verse 26. And they took the bullock which was given them and he dressed it and he called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon saying oh Baal hear us what a predicament Baal hear us the people are watching Baal hear us it's a day of testing to know whether the nation will be handed over to you. Oh, Baal, hear us. Don't allow us to come to shame. We've been standing for you. Oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice. There'll be no voice. You know, all these idols that people fear, they don't have any voice. All these uh, gods of the land that people fear, they don't have any voice and they don't have any power. You will not fear them. Yeah. There was no voice nor any that answered. They lived upon the altar which was made. Now, gymnastics do not make a prayer fervent or to be answered that will jump you know have you seen some people you know what God does he does on the basis of faith the young men in the night vigil and they run here they run there they jump they spin and then they hold and they shout God doesn't respect shout that comes from a heart not trusting in his word. It is not the jumping. It is not the spinning. It's not even the dancing. It's not the drumming. It is not the gymnastics that makes prayer to be answered. They jumped upon the altar with the mage. Look at verse 27. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, cry aloud. We must give credit to Elijah. I give credit to Elijah. No other person with him. What would I have done myself now? 
if I'm invited to a place. And then the people are on the opposite side. I'm on the only one on this side. And my own deeper life people do not stand in the amen corner to clap. And then I'm seeing what I'm seeing. And the people are looking at me like this. Will my heart jump out of my body? By the grace of God, no. When you are alone, and when you have to stand alone, like Elijah, you will stand with confidence and faith, and nothing will shake you in Jesus' name. And so he said, he said, God, either he's talking, having conversation, or he's pursuing, or he's in a journey, or peradventure, he sleepeth, and must be awake. Look at verse 28. And they cried aloud, and they caught themselves after their manner. That's what they have always done after their manner there are people that do not know how to change how to move how to do things differently and if you've been going on the same road and following the same pattern all these many years and no good answer came wouldn't you be wise if you change your method but after their manner, they caught themselves with knives and with lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. Look at verse 29. And it came to pass when midday was past, and they prophesied, prophets of Baal, they also prophesied. You know, people can prophesy either from the Holy Spirit or from the satanic spirit or from even the human spirit. The human spirit feels, you know, I look at the woman and I want to say something. And I say, let me prophesy into your life. That may just be the human spirit. Or it may be a person that has gone to have what they call the juju or whatever to succeed and they know that the people they're waiting for prophecy and so he comes and with the background of the juju in our say I'm prophesying it your life evil spirit or somebody now comes like Elijah it doesn't depend on the human spirit. It doesn't depend on the satanic spirit. It has nothing to do with that, but the spirit of the living God. I pray the spirit of the living God will take over your life in Jesus' name. And you'll not be interested. I want to prophesy. I want to prophesy. And then human spirit, satanic spirit, and talk, talking, talking. That one will bring you to condemnation. And it says, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. That there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded. I pray. You will not minister in vain. Yeah. You will not fast in vain. Yeah. You will not prophesy in vain. Yeah. You will not preach in vain. Yeah. You will not minister in vain. Yeah. Let's come to point number three now. Point number three is the power for remaking a holy nation. A holy nation. What kind of nation is that? Look at First Peter chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Tell me what follows your Bible. An holy nation. That's the church. The church, a nation within a larger nation. God wants the church from the minister to the members from the leader to the followers everyone, every section of that local church 
and every section of that national church he wants everyone to be saved to be holy and to have a life of holiness within the locality of their families and in the larger audience of society he wants the church to be a holy nation a peculiar people that he should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light he will do it he will start with you and there you carry that word of righteousness and holiness you carry it to your congregation to your people and to all the people you have chance that will listen to you and the lord will transform their lives in jesus name the power for remaking a holy nation three things number one the integrity of a godly prophet number two the immutability of god's promise number three the importunity of a guided petitioner a petitioner comes and is guided by the promise of God is guided by the prophecy of the word is guided by the proclamation that came to him from heaven he makes his petition and he is importunate the importunity of a guided petitioner let's come to number one number one the integrity of a godly prophet we're looking at first kings chapter 18 reading from verse 30 it says and elijah said unto all the people come near unto me and all the people came near unto him and he repaired the altar of the lord that was broken down if we're going to be the Elijah of this time, the Elijah of our generation, the Elijah of our day, we will not just leave things the way they are in our local churches, in our denomination, in our ministry, and in whatever God has called us to do, we observe the altars that are broken down. And we'll see the things we can look at physically, naturally, with our natural eyes. And we can see that the altar is broken down. And the people that come on that altar, leaping on the altar, doing their gymnastics, they've defiled the altar. Elijah came as a prophet of integrity. And first of all, he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down look back at your own ministry at your own profession at their altars of the lord the way of the lord at their is there the worship of the lord that is broken down and we brought the world into the church repair that if you have courage to start from there to repair what is broken down the power of God will follow you through. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, and Elijah took 12 stones. He didn't take 10. He didn't take 11. He was praying to the God of Israel. And Israel had the 12 patriarchs. And because of those 12 patriarchs, he took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. Look at verse 32. And with the stones he built an altar in the, in the name of the Lord. Not in the name of Elijah, 
He builds an altar in the name of the Lord, not in the name of the founder of her denomination. He built an altar in the name of the Lord and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. Look at verse 33. And he put the wood in order. He put the service in order. You know, we need to think of when Christ was on earth, how did he minister? What did he minister? Have we so gone far away from orderliness in our worship of the God of order? Then we have to come back and put everything in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said fill four barrels with water and pour it on the bond sacrifice and on the wood four barrels look at verse 34 and he said do it again the second time and they did it the second time and he said do it the third time and they did it the third time four first time four second time four the third time twelve again symbolizing representing the number of the children of israel this man was so meticulous to stay and to stand by the revelation of the word of god verse 35 and the water ran round about the altar and he filled the trench also with water. Look at verse 36. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet, Elijah, not the salesman, Elijah, not a secular motivator, Elijah, not a liar, a deceiver, thinking and telling them they were all right when everything was all wrong. Elijah, the prophet, a prophet of integrity, came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God. Not let it be known this day that I am a great prophet. No. He's serving a great God. And he's going to elevate. He's going to emphasize. And he's going to impress in the hearts of the people about God. Let God be all in all. And let the minister be nothing. And when you exalt God like that, and all you do, and all you say, and all you pray, and all you demand, and all you minister, is for the glory of God to be shown in the land. God will show up. Yeah. And then you say, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Can you go before the Lord with all the things you have introduced into your ministry? I have done all these things at thy word. With all the deception and all the lies and all the you know, prophecies engineered by the human heart, can you say, I have done all these things at thy word? With the secret sin of the minister, with some of the members, can you say, I have done all this according to thy word. We must be able to have a conscious voyage of offense toward God and toward all men that we can come in the presence of the Lord that God, you know all things. You see all things. You see in darkness. You see in the light. You see in the private. You see in the public. And you know, mighty God, I 
have done all these things according to thy word. That's what makes us men and women of integrity. That is not just your heart pushing you, your mind pushing you, desire for greatness pushing you. All you want is to do all these things according to his word. I pray God will give us the grace. Uh, give us the enablement and they will give us the perseverance not only to start and do one thing um, according to his word but to do all things how many things how many things how many things are you going to do according to his word you must then go back home and examine uh, what you do and then point at that at that, at that, is that according to his word? And whatever is not according to his word, the Lord will give you the courage to remove that thing. And then you'll be able to come before the Lord like a man of integrity, a woman of integrity. And the Lord will show himself mighty in your ministry in Jesus' name. Verse 37, it says in verse 37, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art God. Look at this, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Thou hast turned their heart back to the Lord. Verse 38, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Look at verse 39. And when all the people saw it, they will see it. The power of God in your ministry, they will see it. Yeah. The answer of heaven to your prayer, they will see it. Yeah. The confirmation of your word before the people, they will see it in Jesus' name. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. And they got rid of Baal prophets. Come to number two here. Number two, the immutability of God's promise. Look at chapter 18, verse 1. In chapter 18, verse 1, and it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the land. That's the word, and the word of God, the promise of God is immutable. What God has said will be done. Look at Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 17. It says, wherein God will him more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel the unchangeableness of his counsel he confirmed each by an oath look at verse 18 that by two immutable things in the which it was impossible for god to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. We have strong consolation because God who has promised he will not fail. You look at his word, you find out the promises and you rely on the promises and the promises alone. You rely on God and on God alone. And when you are like that, and you know the God who has promised will not lie, He will fulfill your, His word in your life, in your ministry, in Jesus' name. Look at number three now. Number three 
is the importunity of a guided petition. In First Kings chapter 18, reading from verse 41, and Elijah said to Ahab, Get thee up and eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Elijah, you have not even prayed. You prayed for fire, and fire came down. And now you have not even prayed for the rain. And you say, Get thee up, eat and drink. The famine of three and a half years is coming to an end, for there is a sound of the abundance of rain. How could you say that? And Elijah says, Well, in verse 41, God had said it in verse 1 that he was going to send rain and God cannot lie and what he said in verse 1 is what I'm saying in verse 41 we have cleared the way we have repaired the altar we have put everything in order we have called upon the God of Abraham of Isaac and of Israel now it's time for God to work in your life the time has come it's time for him to work and before you get out of this place, you know, what he said on the first day is going to fulfill even from today in your ministry in Jesus' name. In your profession in Jesus' name. Now, when you leave the meeting, you don't leave your notes behind. You don't leave the promise behind. You don't leave the prophecy behind. You don't leave his declaration behind. Everything he has said, everything he has given, you go with everything he has declared and demonstration, manifestation will follow you in Jesus' name. And so he like that said unto Ahab, get thee up eat and drink for there is a sound of abundance of rain verse 42 in verse 42 so Ahab went up to eat and to drink when Ahab can believe Elijah and he can do exactly as Elijah had said and then he was expecting that rain will come and Ahab went to eat and to drink. Something is happening in the nation. Yeah. When you speak with confidence, it transfers confidence to Ahab, to the hearers. When you speak with assurance, it transfers assurance to the people who are hearing. When you speak with authority, it transfers that understanding of authority to the people you're speaking to when you speak in faith and trust in the Lord. It transfers the faith into the people you're talking to. And so Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Camel. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees this tells us about his posture actually the position of your body does not matter in the condition of your heart you kneel god answers prayer you stand god answers prayer you stretch your hands to heaven god answers prayer you put your head between your knees, God answers prayer. You lie down, God answers prayer. It's not the posture of the body. It's the position, the condition of the heart. And when the heart is right, everything will go right. Look at verse 43. In verse 43, and said to his servant, after he had prayed, go now and look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. There is nothing. 
there should be something. God said in verse 1, Go tell Ahab, I send rain upon the land. And then he went and said, There is nothing. And so he said again, He said, Go again second, seven times. Second time, nothing. Third time, nothing. The fourth time, nothing. Why didn't Elijah give up and go back to God and say, God, we're not seeing anything. You told me that there will be rain. God didn't have to say it the second time. He has said it already. There will be rain. Yeah. In your life, there will be refreshing. Yeah. In your life, there will be righteousness. Yeah. In your life and ministry, there will be revival. Yeah. And so he said, go seven times. And then in verse 44, it says, And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. Elijah did not say, mm, That's not what we're looking for. We're not looking for a little cloud, a small cloud, like a man's hand. We're looking for rain that will fill the whole of the land. But he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. It's coming. I said, It's coming. Reign of revival. It is coming. Yeah. Verse 45. And it came to pass. It will come to pass. Yeah. In the meanwhile, that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. A great rain. Yeah. A great rain. Yeah. In your ministry. In your profession, yeah. in your church, yeah. in your denomination, yeah. a great trade yeah. on our land. Yeah. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Look at verse 46. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. And he girded up his loins and ran before Elijah to the entrance of Jezreel. Ahab was riding a chariot. Elijah was running without a chariot, without a horse, all by himself. And he outran the man on the chariot they tell us if you've not been doing exercise 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 walking jogging running throwing weights lifting weights and strengthening your backbone if you've not been doing that every day or at least three four five days in the week when any challenge comes that were to rise up and run you cannot because you have not been doing it look at elijah at the brook cherith just stationary there one year and then in the widow's house just there he didn't even have the chance to walk around the compound because they were searching for that man i was hidden there and then when the time came to run he outran the man on the chariot my time has come to run your time has come to run and it doesn't matter whether you did it at the Brook Church, you were all there stationary one year, or you were just like that, another two and a half years, three and a half years now, you've been stationary there, but now the call has come, and the challenge has come, and your time has come, you will run ahead of Ahab. Yeah. The power 
the energy and the spirit of the young man that has backbone that will run the race and will not be tired and will not be weary they that wait upon the lord they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run they will not be weary they walk and they will not fade because the god of heaven that strengthens that empowers is here today and you will rise and you will run and you will achieve and you will make it onto the place where you ought to be in jesus name the halves of the world they have their chariots the half of the world they have their technology the halves of the world they have all the gadgets the halves of the world they have all the things that are helping them scientifically and with engineering and with gadgets and with social media and with their chariots they are running but now you the spirit of god in you the power of God in you, the unction that comes from above will be greater and higher than all those gadgets. Where are you? I'm looking for the man. I'm looking for the woman. You will run. You will not be tired. You will not be weary. The spirit of the Lord will take over your life. Unction, anointing, power supernatural the holy spirit will take over your life you will run i will run i will run open your mouth and tell the lord tell the lord tell the lord tell the lord your time has come your period has come the time has come for the power of the Lord to take hold of you and for you to run. Don't say I'm old, you will run. Don't say I'm a woman, you will run. Don't say I've never done that before, you will run. A power, a courage, with strength, with ability without vacillating without wondering will it happen will it not happen i've not done that before i've not gone that way before god comes on you and god puts his power in your life and he says this is a new day this is a new day stressing up Elijah's today listen up Elijah's today men of faith women of faith men of power women of power let the fire fall on your altar on your heart your soul your spirit let the fire fall burn every child born all the useless things that have come on the altar is giving us the prophecy and the promise Is giving us the prophecy and the promise. A rain of refreshing. The rain of righteousness. Open up 
tell you how far can you go without the rain of refreshing how far will you go without the rain of righteousness how far will you go without the rain of revival follow a good process follow a good process get rid of bear get rid of foreign power get rid of alien spirit Get rid of Ahab's compromise. Search and find out any satanic spirit there, any action of mere depraved human spirit. Let all the other spirits give way. Let all the other spirits give way. And let the spirit of the holy God of heaven move without a rival in your heart, in your life. Like Elijah, repair the altar of the Lord. All those worldly things that have come in, take them off. That dependence on other powers, take that off. Set everything in order in your ministry, in your church, in your assembly. Set everything in order and do all these things according to His word. According to his word, be a man, a minister of integrity. Depend on the immutability of God's promise. Don't leave any stone unturned. Come alive. Come anew. Come above all those things 
that the great ministers and receive the anointing, the unction, the vision, the focus, the perseverance to run and believe that the power of God can so come on you you will outrun that Ahab on the chariot Jesus name we pray everybody I said in Jesus name we pray if you are full of expectation that the anointing the power the strength the unction the fire fire power of Elijah will be upon your life and ministry and profession I said in Jesus name we pray You've got the word, you've got the wisdom of God, you've got the promise, you've got the prophecy, you've got the passion, and now is your time to go out and move in the power of the Lord. That power will not fail in your life. If you'll not look this way or that way, but you'll be focused, visionary heavenly minded depending on the god of heaven alone i pray that fire power will be upon your life in jesus name ahab will not stand before you 
Jezebel will not stand before you. All those prophets of foreign gods will not stand before you. You will keep the vision. You will keep the fire. You will not vacillate here and there with the people who are undecided in Jesus' name. Your steps will be steady. Your ministry will be steadfast. You will go on and on until everything the Lord has spoken concerning you will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Till the end of your life. Till your last breath. Till Christ comes. You'll be firing on. Nothing will stop you. Sickness will not stop you. Economy of your country will not stop you. And the false prophets in the land will not stop you. And the conspiracy of people that are opposed to your progress will not stop you. I am an achiever. I will succeed. I'll be significant in the land. Raise up that hand, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I bring every brother, every sister, every minister, every professional, everyone that has the fire within, the desire within, they want to be the Elijah of their community at this time, Lord, open the heavens upon them in Jesus' name. All the chaff in their lives, all the things that weigh them down, all the things that turn their eyes in the wrong direction, Lord, Get everything away in their lives in Jesus' name. Fire from on high. Power from on high. Vision from on high. Strength from on high. Energy from on high. Function from on high. Ability and authority from on high. Bring on everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, what you do here today for my brother, for my minister, for my colleague over there, what you do today will not be a miracle of a moment. It will go on and on and on in their lives. And the next time they enter and they stand, on the podium of ministry Amen. even the people will see the new fire Amen. the new fire Amen. the new fire Amen. the new power Amen. the new unction Amen. the new anointing Amen. the new boldness Amen. the new courage the new miracle walking power. Amen. The word of God in your mouth Amen. will bring miracle from heaven. Amen. The good works, Amen. the mighty works, Amen. the miraculous works Amen. you have never seen, Amen. you'll begin to see in your ministry. Amen. And I pray your fire will keep on burning. Until the glorious day Amen. when the dead in Christ shall rise and the living saints shall be caught up together with them in the air, Amen. you will not miss the rapture. Amen. Between now and then, keep on firing on. Nobody will stand before you. Amen. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 